We're just like the mail, baby. All we do here is send it. This was just breaking it in, so I drove it about 30 miles or 20, 20, 30 miles, and then changed the oil, and then you could start, you know, getting harder on it. But that's the oil. I mean, there was maybe like a quarter of a quart that was clean that I used to soak the lifters and push rods, whatever. Not the lifters, or the push rods and rockers, whatever. But the rest of that, that's what came out of it. And that was, I think, synthetic I had to break it in. There's a couple specks in there, like bugs that float in there, but yeah, I'd say it was time to change the oil. I'm gonna fill it and drive it. All right, so I'm taking apart the fuel pump, and I look at, I was like, huh, because I, I use my little nine volt setup weird thing with masking tape holding it together to check if the pump still work, and I still heard the pump move. So I'm like, huh, weird. And I look at this harness, and that's melted, but that's a ground. So I'm looking, why is the ground melted? And I pull, I like just like tug a little bit on this, and this just slid right out of these two that I did. So that could have been a giant fire and lit this thing up. Luckily it didn't. Um, I'm probably just gonna buy, I'm gonna have to buy a whole new hanger, cause I don't, I don't know what to do for those two things unless I get them separate, but I don't know. <clears throat> I gotta look. That could have been bad. Whoops. So I'll probably have shown in the video what happened to the old wiring, but I probably should have done this from the start. Is Racetronics, I'll probably insert a picture, has an intake harness. I didn't get a video of it because my phone's about to die. But it grounds to this top of the pump. You drill a little hole. I forgot what size it was. And then they have their own 10 gauge intake harness and then all 10 gauge out, which is a little better. Um, yeah, so that's it. Putting the tank back in. And hopefully this one doesn't burn up. It's just weird that it burns up. Because in my fuel pump, all the wiring, it goes to a 20 amp fuse, a relay. A second relay and then i got a 30 amp circuit breaker like like just per once it blows the fuse the fuse you can't replace it one of them that's fuel pump right there so i don't know it's weird that it didn't blow something else before it burned up the pump not the pump but the wiring want me to hold it no i'm just looking all right well i'm under here pulling the 4l60e it's sent the converter that was twice the price of the trans. Um, yeah, this and the plug in here. I don't know if this would have cost something, but here, if I get my hand in there, that kind of goes up and down and it leaks a little bit, spins side to side, spins in a circle. So I don't know if that caused part of the problem, but first and second are strong. And I lost like partial of third and fourth is gone. So I think the clutch pack in three and four is done for. But um, yeah, dropping the trans now. It's not really that hard, especially on the ground. Um, and I could easily get to all the bolts too. They're not, cause there's only like five of them in there. So yeah, pulling the trans and I got a little secret surprise that is going in here next. So yeah. All right, so motherfucker, I don't know if you see this. But this shit is teetering. Oh, fuck. Um, oh, baby. I'm gonna have to bench press this motherfucker out of here. All right, probably no camera. Oh, maybe a camera. If that's a good angle. Oh, well. It's full of fluid, too. I should have drained it. Oh, I'm laying in the fluid. Oh, come here, baby. Oh, what was that? balls i mean it's kind of heavy but oh my god <laughs> yeah boy. get 
back on the jack, motherfucker. Oh, the jack is escaping. Oh. Get on there, bitch. Oh, I care less about the fucking pan. I got another one. Oh, my God, the fluid. I should have drained it. <laughs> this is not the smartest way to do it, but... Oh, well. Oh, oh fucking drowning in fluid. <sighs> oh, I just don't have the right... Oh, my God, look at the fluid. Fuck you, it might roll out. Half, half on me, half on the jack. Oh, fuck. legs cramping up. I need to eat bananas. Oh, fuck the fluid. Fucking nasty. Oh. Alright. I think it might go there. Oh my god, I'm covered in... <clears throat> oh, I hear my shirt just fucking drenched. Oh. Dude, I made a mess. Look at that. <laughs> I'm fucking oh. covered in it. Oh my, ooh, it's freezing. This shit is nasty. But there it is. I'm probably just gonna leave that there. Fuck it, I'm gonna throw some powder on the floor and I'm done. It's like midnight. I got work tomorrow. Uh, get that out. <laughs> Boom. Oh well. Damn, shit's nasty. Surprise, so upgrading to a Turbo 400 built trans brake, uh, low car, you know, JW Bell housing. It's legit, man. Went to Iowa to pick this thing up. It's actually got a long tail shaft, and um, I'll actually show you where's my tape measure. This one, the old trans 460. Ah, oh, can barely get it. Um, here. So that's about what? 30, 31. I'm reading about 30, 30 and a half, just about. And this one is about 30, 33. So I'm hoping the drive shaft is, will be close. Same thing with the, oop. Same thing with the trans mount. It's about what? Like 28 and a half, just about or something. And this one is like about 28, 28 and a half. So I'm hoping this is close to fitting. Just without no modifications other than a converter and um, different slip yoke. But yeah, I'm gonna stab it, see what happens. The beginning of this video is probably, I think it was May 31st, and it is now, what, June 17th. Um, May 31st, I had a problem with the fuel pump wiring. I got that all squared away. Um, and I don't know, two weeks ago maybe, on a test drive, uh, lost third and fourth. Uh, not, well, I lost partially third and all of fourth. And uh, I was talking to a guy, and he said it's probably where the clutches are for three and four. Uh, either the clutches, I was talking to two guys, actually. He said, one guy said the clutches were fucking toast because the transmission fluid was burnt. And it's It was, like, black. That's why I'm leaning more towards clutches. But then another guy said uh, that housing the sun shell, I, th I think sun shell that it's in, um, it'll swell up and crack, and then it won't, like, do the clutches right so i think it was a mixture of both because i think i think i remember when i had it apart or when one of my the one guy who said it was the clutches when he had it apart 
um there was like a small like sp like spot you can see stress in it look at this frog why is it all black murdered out oh he murdered out that's sick as hell anyways um yeah so then i actually got a built turbo 400 with a uh, trans brake reverse manual valve body everything but it has a long tail shaft that's why nobody wanted it so the guy came down to 1500 for me because he wasn't selling it nobody wanted it because i guess it's i don't know but um it worked out for me because a t normal turbo 400 with the short tail shaft is shorter than my than that transmission so it wouldn't have worked i would have had a length in my drive shaft only by like i think a couple inches so it, c it wouldn't have been right but this long tail shaft i think was like maybe three or four inches longer so it was easier to, it was easier that way just to shorten it so i got it shortened by a lo actually a local shop but they said before they even shortened it they they said it didn't look right the way they had or pst had the weights on now i'm not dissing pst because they set me up with a pretty good deal but it was like 35 thousandths out which is like 35 well like 35 pieces of hair which might not be much it's probably not much in the grand scheme of things but i don't know if after a while that would break down or like rip apart the bearings in the rear end or however the transmission works i planetaries i however however it works with the output shafts and whatever i don't know if that would have rattled things after a while or not but i know this shop they've done some work for where i like where we take drive shafts out at our shop and then we send them to them so I know they do some good work there. Um, but other than the drive shaft, I have to wire in my trans brake in the Holly, wire in, I will probably wire in a bump in the Holly. It's all on a diagram. And then I actually, while the transmission, I knew it was blown up, but I was still getting on it in second and trying to get on it in third. Um, the way I had this ran, I know was stupid because this is supposed to be the vent cap for when there's too much pressure and it's supposed to go to this bottle. But I ran it there just because I ran it the steam vent to here just because I had nowhere else to run it like an idiot. And I didn't even take apart that to see what fitting it was. But I took that apart and all it is an eighth inch NPT. So I don't know why I just didn't take the time to look at it. But I got an eighth inch NPT to the barb so I could run this to there. And then I'll run my hills I have took down here to the right spot here. I don't know why I just didn't do that before. I was too lazy. I ended up blowing, blew this pose apart. I got another one um this one was the original one that i cut to fit and the one i got is like an 01 tahoe hose. My charge pipe where did i set it over here uh my dad did some more welding on it he took it to his shop um problem i kept blowing it off this should be all right and they also did a blow off valve on it too them look pretty good um i think with both of those i shouldn't have a problem with blowing it off anymore until i go to aluminum but <clears throat> yeah i'm gonna get the drive shaft in then uh set it down and start wiring it up I'll probably show the wiring because there's not many videos on that and I want a simple, a simple way of doing it, which I have. So here's what I got so far. Um, it's a ground, ground input, it's a ground activated, I think. I gotta, th I gotta think of how this works. But anyways, so I have switched power coming into the top, switched power in a loop. I could have just ran it straight there, but there's my light and I kind of wanted to see the lights. So no one's going to see this anyway. So then it's got a loop. So I just put power there. Here's the activation from the Holly. From here's from the ECU. This is the wire I used from the trans brake, or from the I mean the two step button, which I just took the things apart because I didn't. Well, I brought these in, but then the diagram I was looking at didn't like use any of these wire colors. So I, I know how to work with this one. So this is the one I'm going to work with. And then since it's a ground or not ground activated, anyways, um, this is the output. So this power. I'll probably put a diagram I'll put a diagram in the one that I use to follow from sloppy mechanics this lead will go to uh power on the transmission pretty sure this is right not sure um we're gonna find out if it works or not but yeah bring switch power in switch power in a loop your trigger to the ground and then power out I believe I believe that's how it works but we're gonna find out all right so next day Saturday um i got everything wired up actually uh i was just trying to get it done because it was late last night but um so in the solid state we have power coming in switch ignition to this switch ignition here's your trigger wire which i have is gray gray and red i think it was but it looks pink and then this this top one that says it's negative is actually going to the power on the trans 
or the yeah it's going to power the solenoid um then to my buttons i can show you in the software but it they're ground triggered so um for my i think it's this one um no i think it's this one for my for my staging or this button on the steering wheel this one uh activates trans brake uh and two-step which i think i have is it's got to be this gray and or white and pink or white and red it's white and red um then my bump is white and black um these are my input or input input wires that i have and then those go into each one side of them and then i just got them ran the ground right up there i just ran a ground over but um yeah it's pretty simple um last night the trans brake worked but i could not i couldn't figure out the bump really um we have to go back through the wiring and see if something fell apart or if in the uh, whatever the software or something's wrong and then i got this ran right for my steam vent i got my steam vent ran down to the right spot here i got my overflow there and an O1 one tahoe hose does not work if you have these holly or these hooker headers like that um it runs straight into my how i have my exhaust ran so uh this one the one that blew up i couldn't remember if it was the upper or lower hose off the old motor but um i bought uh nap actually had them in stock at the town next over not in my town but that's a lower one it was just not the same and then this is actually an upper one that you just cut this much off and then the upper one goes on there so yeah um gonna fill it with coolant i got good clamps some those like band ones whatever good clamps gonna put my charge pipe on with the blow valve um and then i'm gonna check trans fluid because last night i had it on the trans brake and i drove it in first gear and reverse so yeah all right so we got the pipe on i had to go to well i went to my closer store to return the hose and clamps and get different clamps well, the guy there said they didn't have any clamps, so I had to go to back to the same place. It's like, I don't know, like 30 miles round trip. And then uh, he checked on their computer and said that my town had three of these in stock. Well, I don't know, whatever my guy was doing, I, I don't know. But anyways, got this on, everything on, fill it with coolant, or not coolant, but water. And then while it's running, check the transmission fluid. Let it rip. Most of the video was probably a vertical video. My dad took it, but she was on one. It actually lasted that hit. Um, another hit. It lasted three hits um, on the fourth one. I was like right by my house. I was coming back. And it, um, it was like 6,400 RPM and it, I heard it go boom and I felt it kind of slow down. So I instantly got out of it. I was like, huh, that's kind of weird. And then... It started to get hot. I was like, hmm. So I shut it off. It started to just get hot just because I was on a pass. So it just needed to catch up with the fan and everything. But I shut it off and then it wouldn't start. And I thought I got my hot starts pretty close. I was like, why is that so weird? So the, I was right in front of our neighbor's house. So he came out and jumped it and I got it started. And then something did not sound right. And it, or because I shut it off too because when I was, uh, when I let off and I was coming down my street, after uh, making a pass, it um, was idling. I thought the throttle got stuck. It was idling at like two grand. Well, technically, well, no, it was idling at like two grand and kind of like giant vacuum leak. And uh, so I shut it off. I was like, hmm, that's weird. I checked it. I t did TPS auto set. I don't know. And then um, got it started again after it cranked for like 10 seconds. And then I heard it and it did not sound right and it was idling super high again. So I just ha I just had my neighbor pull me home on a side by side. Um, but uh, I get home, I let it cool all the way down because it starts right up when it's cold always. Um, and I had the battery charger on it. So I start it and I, so I could hear major leakage. So I'm, I'm looking around and I put my hand under because this was like, this uh, was on the intake like this. So I didn't, I didn't see it. 
I put my hand under it, and there's a massive hole there. So, um, and then I, I did the same thing too. Well, my dad actually explained it pretty good. Um, stainless bolts in um, an aluminum intake, the way they heat up and cool back down, it backed all four bolts out of the throttle body and it ate a little bit of the gasket, which I think is all right. It's, it's, it's LS, it's tough. Five, not even LS, it's a 5.3. It's tough. But um, yeah, so all I gotta do is get a new gasket, get lock washers, I get a heavier duty one of these other than a six dollar amazon but but yeah um only problem was i wasn't going all the way into third because i didn't have my uh cable adjusted right so i adjusted my cable and all i gotta do now is get a coupler and a gasket and we'll be back in business making passes but yeah the trans brake is freaking sick dude fucking trans brake and bump that's what's up time to break down on the way to a car show in a town um uh, there's a kid, the Casey's. I saw him looking at my car, and I was in second, so I got on it hard. I was probably the most I've ever hit the throttle, for maybe like I was like 62 percent. I think I saw, and I went to grab third. Bam! Nothing backfired. Uh, I coasted all the way into a school parking lot, um, and no reverse, no anything. And I was like, man, I just sent another trans. And then I looked under the car, and I looked at the converter, and the converters. I'm like. Well, either the input shaft's broken or the converter's fricked. So luckily, as I was sitting in the school parking lot, my boss pulled up, I was going to get groceries. He said, or the truck and trailer's at the shop, if you wanna come get it. So we dragged it here with a chain. My dad was in my Suburban and uh, I asked my boss if I just pull the train. So about 15 minutes later, um, look in there at the converter. Oh, it fills up too fast. Oh, you kind of see it now. Anyways, there's stuff flying around in there. So, my $300 swap meet buy is not a good one. But oh well, it's not a trans. Just gotta get a new converter for it. What can we do? Same. This is about reason number two million. Everyone should have a Walmart cart. Um, this is how I'm gonna drain the trans too. Maybe they're gonna put a pan in there. Or on that level and then just drain it and then when it's drained i tip it over and uh check the filter i don't even know if i'm going to check the filter depending on how the fluid looks uh, end place shaft i think is still all right there, i mean there's a little bit but not too much which is all right i'm just hoping that converter didn't completely frick up anything else it should be all right though i hope i mean that's still spinning good and fluid comes out the holes a little bit so I'm hoping it's all right. It might, it might survive. This is about the last hit it made. This is about a hour before I pulled the trans out. Um, left in first gear, I was trying to leave in second. My cable still wasn't right for the linkage. So I left in first, grabbed second, still didn't have third. But as you can see here, it started to pull the wheels a little bit before it started to spin on these circle track tires. I just, Need to get on, get, get some slicks or some street tires or something, and then uh, turn it down a little bit more. But it was just blowing through the converter. After I got out of first and hit second, you'll hear it. And after this, it just blows through the converter, it barely pulls. But I should have took that as a sign as the converter was a piece of junk. But oh well, what can you do?